It's too high, high, high above me. Jamie, you sound so lovely. You sound rough. Rough? Yeah. I look rough, don't I? I just like look disgusting. I look disgusto barfo, which is how I also feel. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and Jamie's deep voice. Exactly. I'm just, I've decided to change my voice, darling. Okay, it is what it is. And now I have an accent too. Isn't that mm -hmm. weird? We are here today to do another episode of Board Game Snapshots. Pacha! Pacha! And uh, we have five games to talk about today. That's what we do in Board Game Snapshots. We do five mini reviews, right? Yep. Now, today's video is sponsored by Pudcat Games, and we are actually going to be starting off with one of their games. Mm -hmm. And that game, this is just the lid, that game is called Davy Jones Locker The Kraken Wakes. No, so, that's, that's reserved for Rasputin. That's Rasputin. Um, so, because they are the sponsor of today's video, this will be more of a preview style. We'll be giving you an overview of the game as opposed to a review. Mm -hmm. Although, we will be probably talking about this in an upcoming wrap-up video. So, you stay tuned for yeah. that. Now, Davy Jones Locker, The Kraken Wakes. Listen, there's two things about this game. Number one, there's an act one. And number two, there's an act two. And you're like, what does that mean? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Well, in act one of this game, you are pirates and you are just exploring the open sea and you're going to different ports, getting treasure, going to the market, you're fighting bad rebels and pirates. other good guys and other pirates. Marauders. You're getting treasures. You're doing all of these different things, okay? And then you're just, and basically you're buffing up your ship. You're like bulking up your ship. And then what happens in act two, you're like, why do you need to bulk up your ship? Because the Kraken woke up. The Kraken wakes. It wakens. It just wakes. Okay. The board itself will flip and the Kraken will appear. And then your goal now is to defeat the Kraken. So in act one, like I mentioned, you're going around. Each person is going to take three actions. You have nine actions to choose from. And they could be a variety of things, whether it's a moving through the open sea, so you're sailing, or you are going to a market, which is going to allow you to collect cards. Uh, you have to pay for them. It's gonna allow you to get cards so that you can upgrade your ship. You're also doing different repairs on your ship. Now, pretty much every turn, you have to draw what is called an open sea card. And that card is going to list out something that you need to do. Sometimes it's something good, sometimes it's something bad. And the result is often determined by a die roll. So it might be like roll however many die you have uh, that is as big as the hull of your ship. And however many skull and crossbones you get, those are successes, and it will tell you how to resolve those successes. At the beginning of each round, you're actually pulling an event card, and you're resolving that. Once again, it could be good. It could be bad. There's so many things, because do you know what else is in the open sea deck? Kraken cards. Kraken cards. Upgrades. Because Kraken can't just be a Kraken. It's got to have upgrades. So if you pull three of those, that round, or that phase immediately ends. Act one. Act one ends and you have to go and fight the Kraken if you pull three Kraken cards or at the end of six events. Once you're kind of done doing all of that, you're kind of supporting each other, collecting treasure, you finish the sixth event or you find the third card, you flip, you physically flip over the board and the Kraken appears. You put the Kraken out in all of his little tentacles and then the whole goal is that you have to kill the Kraken before he kills all of you, right? Now, in this phase, what you're doing is you're actually pulling whirlpool cards because obviously the Kraken's creating a whirlpool. You see? Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going here? And the whirlpool cards are going to show you how your ship moves within that map, and it's also going to determine how the tentacles spawn and all of this different stuff. Yeah. The tentacles are going to get a turn to attack you, 
The Kraken is going to get a turn to attack you, and then the players are going to get a turn to take three actions again, and now they have less actions to choose from, but it's essentially you're attacking the Tentacles mm -hmm. and the Kraken. What's really interesting about this is that typically... Um, in this type of game, if you if you die, you're just kind of out and everybody else continues. If you die, what happens is you actually just go overboard and someone can come and pick you up and you can board their ship mm. and then you can help support them in defeating the Kraken. Mm -hmm. That's basically the game. It plays 30 minutes per player. It does play solo. I have played it solo. It is very difficult to win thematically. You are fighting a Kraken. Mm -hmm. It comes with a variety of different like variants of the game. There's um, uh, there's obviously the solo mode. There's a two-player variant. There's ways to play it easier. There's ways to play it harder. All of these different things. Mm -hmm. There is an expansion coming for this in October, which we will be having a preview video on. So stay tuned to see how it adds. Um, I just want to add that normally, like with these boss battler games, mm -hmm. they're usually attached to some sort of like scenario thing or like yeah. campaign even. Yeah. It's interesting that this one took on a very one, one episode, one like episodic like boss battle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. not like a drawn out campaign that you have no. to keep like not that you can't come back to the game but do you know what i mean like those yeah. games can be difficult to table oh totally um, yeah and so i thought it was interesting that it's like this is act one act two and then you're done for that mm -hmm. episode that you've played yeah and there's so many like there's so many different event cards and open sea yeah. cards the game is going to be different every time you play and what is the beauty of it and how it keeps its pace is because it's six events for the first thing, and then, then it flips and you have the Kraken battle. So it's not like you're like, oh, when will this happen? Mm -hmm. when, like, you know there's a timer involved. Yeah. Um, and that timer could even be shorter depending on the cards that you pull in the open sea. It's just interesting that they made it condensed mm -hmm. so that you know, you know that you're in it for an X period of time, and yeah. then you can come back to it whenever you want. 100%. Hundo. But that is Davy Jones Locker, The Crack and Wake. Stay tuned for more coverage on this coming in October, and uh, we'll give you our thoughts on it in our monthly wrap up. All right, next up we have from Stonemire Games A Big Black Expeditions. Expeditions. Uh, a sequel to Scythe. Mm -hmm. um, this was sent to us from Stonemeyer, so thank you to them for sending it along for mm -hmm. this review. Um, Expeditions is, as mentioned, a sequel to Scythe uh, in the Scythe world, and you are doing very Scythe-like things. Uh, you are controlling a mech, exploring territories, uh, completing objectives, and ultimately racing to... Uh, be the first to complete a bunch of those objectives and score a bunch of victory points. Mm -hmm. Victory points in this game are very similar to Scythe. It's money. Um, everything you do equals money at the end of the game, and whoever has the most money at the end wins. Um, where this is different is pretty prominent, actually. Yeah, very um, different. I think the best way to describe Expeditions is a solitaire-esque version of Scythe. Solo puzzle. Um, it's very much, especially we've only played it at two player um there would be a little <clears throat> bit more meanness at a higher player count but basically the meanness is only like oh you're if someone's in a person. spot that you want you can't go there on that turn basically yeah. and ultimately what you're trying to do is basically remove a bunch of corruption from a bunch of different tiles that are out on the board there's these hexagonal tiles that you're going to be going and flipping and exploring um, and bull pulling corruption from the bag and vanquishing, vanquishing things, um, etc., etc. It's it's very scythe-like, but very solitaire puzzle. Mm -hmm. For me, I still lean towards scythe. scythe. Yeah, the the full scythe experience. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, what what I would say is this is meant for someone that might not like that inherent. Area control. Area control combat. piece or like the combat piece of Scythe, even though it yeah. can be minimal mm. in a Scythe game. This really removes all of that. Yeah. It's very just, it just becomes about optimizing your turns mm -hmm. and trying to be as efficient as possible with those turns. Yeah. I learned the game and taught it. Mm -hmm. I will mention there's a lot of terminology in here that's not normal gamer terminology. Like the discard pile is called the sweet pile. Mm. Your hand is called something different and it's not actually in your hand, it's next to your player board. It's it's not overly difficult to wrap your head around. It just 
it adds a little bit of complication in terms of teaching because it's mm -hmm. not normal terminology. Yeah, I really like this game. I would agree. Like, I don't even really kind of put it in the same camp yeah, as Scythe. Like, I think that's fair. If there's people like, which one do I need to own? Like, I wouldn't be able to answer that because they're so completely different. I agree. I love a good solo puzzle, so I really enjoyed, I completely demolished Jeff in this game. I can't I'll just say that. But like really it, it's all about kind of planning ahead and it's like, okay, well I need to get my stars out and what is my easiest path and you only have so much movement and there's only so many tiles that are open. So you really have to like kind of think three steps ahead. It's like, okay, this turn I'm gonna do this, this turn I'm gonna do this. Then I have to go and sweep my cards and refresh them, meaning that you get them all back, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So I really, really liked it. But if I were ever just given the choice to play this or Scythe, I would pick Scythe, even though they're completely different. Um, I would say like for me, Scythe is a must have in our collection. This I wouldn't consider a must have in our yeah, collection. Yeah, I do, I will say I do enjoy the intimacy that is in this game with the characters, mm. which you don't get in, in Scythe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you actually play as a character with a companion. <clears throat> yeah. And that was really cool to, to dive a little bit deeper into the story. Yeah. I think, I think the miss for me, like, I love this game. I just, I wish they hadn't called it a sequel to Scythe. Mm -hmm. I think that is what is getting confused in people's heads and they're expecting something totally different. It's just in the world of Scythe. I know. So, like, that's, don't yeah. think about it as a sequel. Yeah. Don't I, call it a comeback, okay? Yeah, it's I, just, <laughs> it's a different game. And if you go into it, for what it is, I think you're going to enjoy it so much more. I do think that's that's fair. I think yeah. in the world of Scythe is a much, much, much better way of looking at this game. Totally. Yeah. And that is Expedition. I almost said Expedition. Expedition. Next up, we have Overboss Duel, which was gifted to us from Brotherwise Games. So thank you to Brotherwise. Um, now, everybody knows, you may know, you may not, I love Overboss. I freaking love it. And so I was so excited to find out that there was a two-player variation of this game. Now in Overboss Duel, it plays almost identical to Overboss with the exception of you have a shared board. However, each person owns one half of that board. Same kind of thing. You are drawing or you're drafting a tile and a a token and then you're putting it out on the board now you can put it on your side or you can put it on the your opponent's side and try and mess them up a little bit so there's a lot more meanness in a original overboss yeah. in original overboss you were the only mean thing you could do is like oh i'm going to take this tile because i think jeff mm -hmm. might need it no no now you can literally be like well i'm going to put this out here because it screws you over the other thing is now the terrain tiles also have different effects that happen as an example, there's ice peaks. And when you put an ice peak out, you can slide any tile on the board. So if somebody is building out a nice long road, you could just slide right the road right out from underneath them and totally screw them on points. Mm -hmm. I really, really enjoyed this. It's mean overboss. It's mean overboss. Like, mm -hmm. could I have asked for anything more from mm -hmm. overboss? No. I think it's great. Um, and we haven't done it yet, but you can use the uh, train tiles from Overboss in this game. But it adds a few different elements. Like now there's hero tokens, and instead of portals, there's spindles or something. I can't Spires? Remember. Spires, maybe, yeah. and they do different things. But it is super, super fun. I loved it. Uh, we did play this on stream, so you can watch that on our second channel, Foster the Meeple Rewind, if you'd like to see it played. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm super into it. I enjoyed this more than, uh, regular Overboss. Mm -hmm. I like, I like the interaction. Jeff likes the interaction. I love Overboss. I love working just like Expeditions. I love working on my own little solo puzzle, mm -hmm. but we also do love mean games. And this is just one of the funnest ways to like mess around with somebody else. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about Overboss a ton. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to give another <clears throat> shout out, uh, on the artwork uh so cool. on the tiles like it's very you know super nintendo-esque it brings back so much feelings of nostalgia for me yeah and i just love i love the way it looks on a board on yeah. the on the table i do wonder now like if we are to reach for overboss like i feel like this is the one we'll, we'll be reaching for if we're playing i think together I, yeah i think if we're playing together it's this one if you're playing solo it obviously would be, not this one it would be the other one <laughs> i couldn't play this one by myself yeah. 
<laughs> me versus me. I guess, yeah, that goes without saying, doesn't it? Anyways, that is over boss duel. Next up we have from Direwolf, Wild Child West. This one was voted on uh, by our Patreon community. We will put out surveys every was now and then. Was any of the other ones? Um, this one in Expeditions and Overboss Duel were voted on by our Patreon community to be featured in today's video. So if you didn't know, we do have Patreon. All the information is below. If you want to vote on games we talk about, you can go there. Yeah, continue. Um, Wild Tile West is a game we actually purchased at Gen Con. Uh, <laughs> it was one of our most anticipated before we went to the convention. And uh, luckily I found a spot where it wasn't super busy and so I picked it up. And thank goodness we did. Yes. Wild Tile West is a tile placement, polyomino <laughs> placement game where you are basically building out a wild, wild, West. wild western town. Um, you're going to be placing out building types. You're going to be placing out bandits. You're going to be placing out sheriffs to shoot those bandits. Yeah. It's ultimately just a smorgasbord of point scoring. Yeah. Is that, a be is that the best? It's a polyomino tile placement game of scoring points. As, as scoring as many points as you can. You know, many points you're as playing possible. out pastures with cattle on them. And then you can place out, um, what was the term for them? That I got super confused. Sheriffs with. and bandits? No, the bootlickers or something. Bootlickers? What was it? What's you a bootlicker? You know oh, the, cow pokes. The cow pokes. <laughs> the old bootlicker. <laughs> you can put out cow pokes to wrangle those cattle to score points. Um, again, you're placing out buildings that might amplify your end game scoring. How about the sheriffs and the bandits? I already did. Oh. Um, and when you shoot the bandits, there you shoot bullets from your supply, and those bullets actually become tombstones, and those score points at the end of the game. Yeah. Each little section of your map has a town in it, and if you fill that town up with these polyono pieces, depending on the year, you're going to score mul a multiplier, or you're going to score a bunch of more points, because this game is played over four years, basically. Mm -hmm. And you're... Collecting resources, collecting, resources, and collecting gold. gold. There's a lot. Needs. There's a lot to it, but it's also very light. It is a very light, accessible polyomino placement game. As long as you can get over the iconography, it plays very, very, very simply. Yeah. There is a dice rolling, dice drafting mechanic where you're basically going to roll dice, mm -hmm. and what you roll will slot into certain sections of the board mm -hmm. that will allow you to draft tiles from that row or column. There's some more nuance to that, but that's basic premise of how you're drafting tiles. And then you're just placing them on your board. It's very straightforward. It was very, so very fun. enjoyable. I, I, The one I think I can compare it the most to, I think, is Planet Unknown without the track. Yeah. Um, and it, Without the track, but with more... Um, scoring opportunities. Scoring opportunities. Because even like some of the You're tiles You're going to score are, a ton of points. Some of the tiles are different colors and they score a different ways. So like the red tiles you have to surround completely in order mm -hmm. to score them. The pink tiles give you end of game and like all of this stuff. Yeah. And there's a ton of variability in terms of the maps. There's like the base maps you can play out. Yeah. There's uh, a one star difficulty maps. There's two star difficulty maps. Collect there's objective a, cards. There's a bunch of different variations in this game. Mm -hmm. um, and I I would say if you're into polyomino placement games, Thank you me. like those tile placement games like Planet Unknown, like Baron Park, like um, why can't I? Why am I blanking on some of the others? Isle uh, of Cats. Isle of Cats. Uh, Grand Carnival. Mm -hmm. This is one to check out. Yeah. Um, They've done an incredible job, in my opinion. It was super, super fun. Again, like I think we scored like a hundred plus points each. I mean, Jamie I scored I more than sure me because did. that's what she's so going to go for here. In this one. But yeah, it, and the production is very beautiful. It has recessed boards for the uh, tiles that you're taking out and yep. placing. Yeah, I very awesome. much, uh, I very much enjoyed it. I'm looking I forward to returning to it. Loved it. I like. We were sitting down playing it, and like we were like two turns in. I was like, I freaking love this game. Yeah. I love polyomino tile placement games. Mm -hmm. And it is, once again, it's another solo puzzle. And you're just out there, you're puzzling. And you're like, oh, you took the thing I wanted. Whatever. I'll just take this and make it work. And it's just, yeah, I, I loved it. I'm very excited to try it solo. Mm -hmm. That's Wild Tiles West. Wicked Wild. Wicked Wild Tile. Wicked Wild Did you want me West. to explain this one? Probably. I'm going to do the last one. And the last one is another Gen Con purchase. Yeah. Uh, so we purchased this while we were at Gen Con. And it's Tiger and Dragon from Oink Games. Uh, you might be like, wow, that's a big box for an Oink game. Thank you. You would be right. 
Uh, in Tiger and Dragon, I believe you're playing as like Kung Fu. A tiger yeah. and a Dragon. You're playing, uh, it's based on a Japanese game. Uh, yeah, based on the popular traditional Japanese game of Goita. Goita? Anyway, you're playing as Kung Fu masters and you're basically just battling each other back and forth. Yeah. How are you doing that? Good you question. are doing that. I'm going to show people because I have to. Yeah, you got to. Um, it has these beautiful, chonky, mahjong-like tiles. Oh, we also did play this on stream on the same video as Overboss Duel. So I'll just link that video below if you'd like to see how so, it So uh, there's a bunch of these tiles, and I actually probably pulled out the worst possible example. They're chonky. Um, and they have numbers on them. And basically, you can do two things in this game. You can attack and defend. That's it. And so if I attack Jamie with a 7, Jamie can choose to defend with a 7. With a 7. If she successfully defends, then she can attack me back. Yeah. If she doesn't, she can pass. I can then put a face down tile. All you're trying to do is get rid of your tiles and score victory points. So the way to score victory points is to get rid of your tiles first, and then depending on what tile you play last, the value of which, whatever it is, you will score a corresponding amount of victory points. So in the game we played, if I played the seven down as my final tile, I would score four victory points on a race to 10. And this is how they fit perfect. They do fit perfectly. They fit in. perfect into the board. Um, and that's the game. There's a bunch of different uh, Variation. variations of, of game modes you can play. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of them. We just um, played the... We just played the base game. Dojo battle. And this is one we're going to be... Oh bringing with us traveling it's so it's good. so simple it's super fun it for some reason is mechanically insanely simple but just has a, enough little puzzle to it to make it enjoyable <clears throat> yeah. and again we've only I'm pushed not sure i understand is there something else i can help with no look at all the read it was listening to me for oh minutes. creepy <laughs> um it's super me mechanically simple but like has just such a little depth of like meanness and, and strategy to it that um you know because again like are you gonna pass are you not very yeah, much enjoyed because it because sometimes you're like you might have the number to defend but if you pass then you might be able to use that against them later because mm -hmm. it goes from one to eight and there's one one two twos three threes four fours like that kind of thing in each color yeah i think total total i don't know anyways yeah. so much Freaking like fun. And if you like, because if you get to a one, there's only like one one. Yeah. So if you get to the one at the end. You've done it. And you've won. And if your you last tile is the win, you win immediately. Win at least game. in the base one. Mm -hmm. I knew that we would enjoy it. Yeah. But I didn't know what to expect. not to that degree. Yeah. Not to it, that degree. It was, I, it was a, and again, you don't need the box. You could put these in a little like. You could put them in a bag. Baggy and, and carry them around if you wanted to bring it out while you're traveling. I'm so, so glad we... Classic we, Oink game, though. I'm s Yeah. It doesn't close. The the tiles were shrink-wrapped tightly, <sighs> and then as soon as you pull those out... It's like they expanded. Yeah. Their heart grew five times the size that day. Yeah, and that's Tiger and Dragon from Oink Games. Yes, it is. And those are five more games that we've been playing recently. We've just been playing some bangers. We have been. Some smash hits. It's been a good run. It's been a good run, RIP. That's everything that we have for today. Now, if you're interested in buying board games like any of the five that we mentioned today, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Heck yeah, it is. You like snacks? I do. Amazing. Where she you find your snacks? Munch pack. Yeah, we got a code. Boss with Meeple, $5 off. That's everything that we have for today. I think I already said that. But thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. Goodbye. That's very wrong. Your voice. What? How did this happen? <laughs> Jamie is sick. Her patience is at zero. I'm in a great mood. Thanks for asking. I was also sick. Uh you barely were sick. You don't get to define whether or not I was sick. My throat has been killing me. I'm just not being as big a baby about it. That's way too high now, isn't it? Uh, not really. Yeah, it is. Do you want to tell them about when I uh, I came over to give you a kiss goodnight? Yeah, last night Jeff came to give me a kiss goodnight. He just looked at me and was like, never mind. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not kissing you. And I was like, that's freaking rude. I mean, come on. I don't, A, I don't want to get more sick. And B, like you were covered in Kleenex and. I've been having Kleenex up my nose because my nose has been running nonstop. We also don't know. Uh, it's probably safe to assume this is like a post con. Yeah. Cold. I would assume. It's called con crud. Have you heard of it? <laughs> I can't take your voice. Right now. I can't take your voice right now. Let's <sighs> do this. Let's go. Excuse me. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome <laughs> Jeff. Get it together. Okay. Oh, I'm no. here. I'm doing it. Oh, you gotta turn that towards you, eh? That's better, probably. We are here today. My hands smell like onions. It's good that you can smell. Yeah, I can smell and taste. I just made really weak coffee. I thought I thought I couldn't taste my coffee yesterday and I was like, oh no, it's it's COVID or whatever. But it turns out I just made really weak coffee. Mm. So, anyways, 